Hello everyone, happy Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving Day, Thursday, November 23rd, 2023. Your podcast on this Thanksgiving Day being brought to you by Hot Springs County Travel and Tourism, reminding you that as temperatures drop and snow falls at Thermopolis, you can always find yourself in hot water. Well, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Hopefully you have made it safe to where you're going as the weather is basically on tap. It's on schedule. We don't have any major deviations from what we've talked about over the last few days. The timing and where the snow is going to fall, all of those things we've been talking about, we don't have anything to tell you that's really anything different. Falling temperatures are developing in the north, and those areas of falling temperatures and snow will develop from the northern areas to the southern areas throughout the course of the next couple of days. We're also going to have some areas of strong winds and we're going to show you where because that's going to cause even more travel concerns. Do expect it to be very cold. We have had some very mild November weather lately, but through the weekend and into early next week, most of the Intermountain West and the adjacent plains will be colder than average for several days in a row. Travel weather will improve in the northern areas Saturday. We'll still have some travel problems in the southern parts of Wyoming and Colorado, Kansas, New Mexico, and into Utah as we go through probably most of Saturday. It's Sunday where the weather clears out everywhere. So the good news is that Sunday travelers will have some better weather conditions to deal with. You know the phrase, red at night, sailors tonight? Red in the morning, sailors take warning. Well, two photos coming in from parts of Wyoming yesterday showing red at sunrise. This from Dennis up in Cody yesterday and just down the road in Thermopolis, same thing. So, interesting scenario with that old sailors weather forecasting tool. The satellite image this morning as we loop it really highlights very, very well what we've been discussing about the overrunning of Pacific moisture over Arctic air. So what you want to look at here are the blue and the light gray areas up here in Canada pushing into Montana. This is the Arctic air sliding south. We've got temperatures up here right now in the single digits. So you can see the blue. The blue there is the low clouds associated with the Arctic air also back up here in those gray clouds. This is the Pacific moisture that is coming in and overriding this coming in from here. So now you can see it visually on the satellite image, you're just not on the graphics that I've been showing you. So that blue is undercutting and coming right underneath this Pacific moisture. This Pacific moisture is streaming this way, but over time, it's also heading south. So as that Arctic air is overrun by that Pacific moisture, you're going to see the weather start kicking into gear. Now the surface map, this is an old school surface observation map from 4 a.m. mountain time this morning. And you can see the wind barbs. This shows that the winds are all coming from the north. And you can kind of see the leading edge uh, of the bigger push of Arctic air coming in just like this. Here's some single digits up here in southern areas of Canada. And while temperatures aren't really cold yet, you can see the wind directions along and east of the divide right here are, are coming in from the north, generally speaking. So the cold air is coming on in, and right here we've got snow developing in central Montana, southern Montana. We've got light snow forming from Cody over to near Buffalo, over to Sheridan, and to near Gillette. Light rain and snow around the Warland area. So at 4 a.m., this is kind of where the precipitation is forming. And you can know why when you look at the upper level low coming in. So there's the winds aloft and on the surface coming in from the north. So there we go. All of that basically on schedule. This is for noon today. This is for noon Friday. Notice the low over Utah strengthens, closes off a little bit, and that just takes warmer moist air right on top of the Arctic air. So this is all what we've been discussing. Now by Sunday at noon, by Sunday noon, the low does accelerate and begins to push on out. So the weather will improve, but winds aloft are still coming into Canada, so it's still going to remain very cold. This precipitation graph looks just like what we've been showing you. There's been very good consistency in the modeling. So you can see the axis of the heaviest snowfall is going to be right here in these areas and also back here into the mountains of Colorado and Utah, a nice little patch there in southern areas of Idaho as well. 
This is where the collision of air masses will be the best, and that's where we're going to see the heaviest precipitation. And there are the snow, the pink areas, the darker blue areas, but even those light blue areas are what you need to watch out for. Now, those numbers you're seeing are in inches, but keep in mind, this is a model. Take it with a grain of salt. Don't take this too literally, but the, the pink and the darker blue areas is where the snow is going to be heavier. And we'll focus in a little bit more in terms of showing you some of the finer details of where the snow is going to fall. So for Wyoming, Colorado, Eastern Idaho, Northern Utah, far Western Nebraska, extreme Northwest Kansas here, you can see that axis of heavier moisture. Now, a couple of things, and we did point this out yesterday. This particular area right here is going to be in a little bit of a snow shadow because the east to northeast winds that are upslope east of the mountains here are downsloping into the Laramie Valley, downsloping into parts of Carbon County, downsloping into parts of Western Sweetwater County, a big downslope hole into the Pinedale area here, another little downslope hole near Lovell and Powell. And then there's also a cutoff of that overrunning in extreme northeastern Wyoming. Colorado's the same thing. Look at the front range. So this is where Denver, Boulder, Loveland, up to Fort Collins and Wellington, you, you tend to get into heavier snow, but lighter snows out here onto the plains. The deeper Arctic air is going to be a little bit more snow here. So there's going to be a variety of snowfall from depending on where you are. In those areas where the easterly downslope winds come in, these little snow holes, you're not going to get as much. Look at the Wind River Mountains and areas near Lander and West Lander just getting clobbered. We also have another little tiny snow hole here. But for the most part, even if you're in a snow hole, you're still going to get snowed on and you're still going to get very cold. I want to talk about the wind. As the Arctic air pushes in from the north and east today, tonight and into early Friday, it goes through the mountain gaps and we're going to have some strong winds along the Interstate 80 corridor here, especially west of Cheyenne, west of Laramie, Rollins, Wom Sutter, on the way to Rock Springs, Grid River, Evanston, then into northeastern Utah here. Those strong northeast winds and up here in central Wyoming as well will cause some problems. Uh, you can just imagine what's going to happen there near South Pass with heavy snow and strong northeast winds. So while there may not be a ton of snow along the stretch, there's going to be wind, strong winds along with it. That'll cause very cold wind chills and very hazardous travel. So it goes without saying. If you don't have to go anywhere today through tomorrow into Saturday morning, staying put, you won't have any travel problems. Travel weather does get better by the weekend and it's going to be really cold. These are the temperature anomalies by noon tomorrow, so we can see where the deeper cold air is going to be. From a nationwide perspective, this is all the way through Monday morning. There will be some snow moving through Chicago, parts of the Great Lakes. We're going to have some lake effect snows up into here. So there could be some travel concerns at airports in far northeastern areas of the U.S. into the Great Lakes region in the upper Midwest as well. Have a happy and safe Thanksgiving. Stay warm. We'll talk to you on Friday.